To generate a phylogenetic tree in Patrick, you can upload genomes to the service individually, as the service allows you to include as many as 200 genomes. Adding them one by one would be a tad tedious. So we're going to make a few groups of genomes to facilitate adding them to a phylogenetic tree. For this particular exercise, we're going to look at endosymbiotic bacteria of insects. Let's start with Buchnera, a genus of bacteria that lives within the cells of aphids. Its generic name honors Paul Buchner, who's regarded as the founder of systematic symbiosis research. So let's go to the global search button here on the home page, and we type in Buchnera, whoops, okay. Buchnera here in the global search box, and you can either hit return or click on the search icon. This will overwrite the page to show you the results of your search function, and that will be broken down into several different categories. Genomes, genomic features, taxa, and specialty genes. Right now I'm interested in going to the genus, so I'm gonna hit Buchnera here and, and click on that. That will rewrite the page and show me the landing page for the genus. You can see that this landing page, we try to bring in a lot of different information. Across the top is a breadcrumb that shows us where we are in the taxonomy of the organism. And then you'll notice that there are several tabs across the top. A few of these we'll be getting into today. This is the information about this particular genus that's available at NCBI. These are the reference and representative genomes for this particular group. And we also have the metadata that we try to show what kind of metadata is available for the group itself. We're gonna talk about phylogeny um, in more detail soon. So let's skip over that. If I were to click on the taxonomy tab here, that would show me the species that are known with this particular um, genus. And you can see it's only one. And let's click on genomes. This will show all the genomes that are within the genus Buchnera, and it's going to include my private data with the public data. If I was logged out, it would only show me the public data. When you're logged in, you'll see both your private and public data. Let's click up here on the filters, and that opens a dynamic filter at the top where you can, you can um, refine your search. So, Let's, under public, let's click on true. I don't want to do it, build, include any of my private genomes in this tree. So I click on true, and now I can see that there are 99 total genomes. Let's look under genome status. There are complete genomes, and what is a complete genome? It means that the genome has been sequenced and the assembly is uh, consistent with the number of chromosomes and plasmids that are available in the organism in the strain itself. For example, if there's one complete chromosome and one plasmid, there would be two um, what we would call contigs. And that all the ends are totally resolved. A plat we all know what a plasmid sequence is, and WGS stands for whole genome shotgun. And this is a genome that has, that where the contigs do not equal the amount of chromosomes and or plasmids in the genome, and the ends probably haven't been resolved. Let's click on complete. Okay, because these should be higher quality genomes. And you can see here it says there are 64 of them. So I, I, I like this group. Looks like a good group. It's got a bunch of different um, hosts that it comes from, from a bunch of different countries, different years, and more important, all the genomes are of good quality. Actually, all of the metadata characteristics are important. I wanna create a group of these. How do I go about it? Well, right here, there's genome name in this checkbox just to the left of that. If you click on that, 
it's going to select all of them simultaneously. And notice something else that it does. Within this vertical green bar, it populates it with possible downstream functions. So I'm gonna click on the group icon here. This opens a pop-up window where I can add genomes to a group that I already have, or I can create a new group. To create a new group, I click on the down arrow here at the end of the existing group and click new group. And now what remains is I have to name the group. And I'm gonna call it Buchnera May 2020, because that's when I'm creating this group. I'm just gonna add it. And you notice that a pop-up window comes up that says that group has been created. So I've created my first group in, in, uh, for this analysis. And now I'm, I want to create more. That was so great. I want to create some more groups. And I want to go step outside of Buchner. I want to look at the other um, genomes that are close to them. So how can I find that in Patrick? Do I have to read papers and look up the, the, uh, the taxonomy and look who's close to them? Well, yes, that's always a good thing to do. But let's go to this phylogeny tab here and maybe we can get there a little quicker rather than reading all the papers. So we click on the phylogeny tab and this opens up an order level tree for the Enterobacteriales. And what we did several years ago was got what we considered to be the high quality genomes within this order. And you can tell there are a bunch of them. And just so that people could see uh, who is close to a particular genus or species. So how do I find Buchnera in all of this? I'm just gonna go the control find, gonna put in Buchnera, hit return. And we have to click down a bit. Actually, the return doesn't seem to be functioning for here, but that's okay. I know where it is. There we go. Here's our Buchnera. Probably misspelled it. So here's Buchnera here. There we go. There are all the Buchnera. And if we look at the tree, we can see we've got Buchnera with their different, what's interesting about most of the um, insect endosymbionts is you notice their names are really long and complicated. The first part is the name of the bacterium. The second part here is, well, if I could click on it, is the name of the host. So when it's something that's as closely aligned with the host as these endosymbiotic bacteria on, they've decided to combine the names here. So we have Buchnera all the way down. And then the first place we get outside of Buchnera is here with this uh, Raisa, Candidatus Raisa. You notice this little uh, period at the end of the line here? Let's click on that. And you notice when I click on that, the vertical green bar over here to the right is populated with some downstream functions. This time I wanna to go to the genome. So let's click on this genome tab, the genome. And this is gonna open the landing page for this particular genome that we have. But I wanna see if there are more of these in, um, in Patrick. So along the breadcrumb, so this is the, this is the particular strain. This is the species here, uh, Raisa pedicicola, or we can go to the genus. So let's click on that. And while that loads, let's talk a little bit about um, this organism. Raisa is named for uh, Eric Reich, who first comprehensively investigated the endosymbiotic system in lice. So these are the endosymbiotic bacteria that are found within the louse. And in the humans, there are head lice, body lice, and pubic lice. And we have, um, we have data for all of those genomes in Patrick. So you've already seen how to do this in Buchnera. 
we would click on the genomes. And then let's click on this filters again. Okay. And let me point out that we have, uh, all of them are public genomes, and we have complete whole genome shotgun and plasmid. Now, one thing I didn't tell you when we created the first group is the code on trees algorithm works on shared proteins. So that if you choose a plasmid, plasmids are one, generally small, and two, they don't have many genes on them that are shared broadly. Often these genes are unique. Building a tree with plasmids is generally a bad idea, so I don't want to do it. I just, I'll click on the complete genome, and in this case, because there's only one complete one, I'll click on WGS, which stands for Whole Genome Shotgun. So let's click on that too. So that gives me eight total genomes. I'm going to click here in the checkbox to select all of them. And look, it's, it's a kind of a nice collection. We've got these different hosts. It looks like some were um, isolated from gorillas, some from pubic lice. I think this is from an orangutan. And this is from the head or body louse in humans. So let's click on the group to create a new group. Once again, it opens up a window. I want to create a new group. And I'm going to call this Raisia May 2020. And we click on add. Now we can do that. And let's watch down here at the corner. And it says, you've created a new group. Hooray. Well, let's do another one. That was so much fun. Let's go back to the tree. So we need to click on this other tab here. And we go back to the tree. And the next one down is this one that says Wigglesworthia. So let's click on this again. OK. And now it's selected. And we can go to the genome. But let me point out that Blockmania is the next one down, because next time we're going to try the global search function for that genome. So I want to go to the genome page for that. And once again, remember, this is for one single uh, genome within this genus and species. But I want to find out how many genomes Patrick has for Wigglesworthia. And Wigglesworthia, let me point out, was named for Sir Brian Wigglesworth, a British entomologist who made significant contributions to the field of insect physiology. These bacteria are fascinating. They're found in tsetse flies, which are the vectors of African sleeping sickness. So let's click on the breadcrumb that takes me to the genus within the breadcrumb, which is Wigglesworthia here. So let's click on that. This gives me all the information about this organism. And let's click on genomes here. OK. Now I know that some of these are my own private genomes because I actually like Wigglesworthia. And I think it's interesting. And tsetse flies are fascinating. You should read more about them. They only give birth to one larva a year. They're just amazing insects. So let's click on the filters. And I want just the public genomes, not my private genomes. So I'm going to click on true. And then we're going to create a group of Wigglesworthia. So we click here. And then we click on, once again, the group icon. And we're going to create a new group. I'm going to call it Wigglesworthia May 2020 and add that group and we watch down here and see that we have successfully created the group and one more remember we wanted to do block mania so instead of going to the home page in the global search or going to the tree and walking through there let's enter oops if one can spell let's enter block mania in the global search page and i just hit return and once again, the search results start with genomes, genomic features, and then taxa. And this will take me right to 
the genus. Now, notice that it says candidatus. Candidatus means that the taxonomy committee hasn't approved it yet. But this, the proposed name of this genus, honors the zoologist Friedrich Blockmann, who just, so back in 1880s, he found these unusual bodies in the midguts of ants. And then later, of course, because we didn't know how to do this at that time, those were discovered to be bacteria. So that's why they've named this for him. I just love the way that these things are named and that it honors scientists who a long time ago were doing a lot of hard work to figure out what was going on in different organisms. Let's click on the genomes tab here. And let's click on the filters here to see if any of that data is private or not. They all seem to be uh, public data. First, you know, when, often when these things are blank, it could be a private, private data, but I haven't annotated any of these genomes independently. So I want to create my last group. I click here. And then I go to the group icon. I want a new group. And that is uh, Blockmania May, whoops, 2020. And add that group. And then once again, we see it right there. OK. We have four groups. We're ready to launch the Code on Trees job. So join me in the second instructional video where I'll show you how to add those four groups and a private genome. Thanks.